It's not a parking lot experience, a registration experience, a hallway experience, a food service experience, a PT experience. People don't look at healthcare that way. It is one great experience that that they will remember for a long time. It's the most important and sometimes the most scary things that happen to people in healthcare. Welcome to Culture Change Rx, the podcast for healthcare professionals that are committed to creating a thriving workplace culture, improving the experiences of employees and patients, and ultimately unlocking their organization's next level of potential. I'm Sue Tetzloff, your host and co-founder of Capstone Leadership Solutions. Join me and my insightful guests each week as we share actionable insights for navigating the crucial people side of the business of healthcare. Subscribe now for a weekly dose of Culture Change Rx. Now let's dive into this week's conversation where culture change takes center stage. We welcome you to another episode of Culture Change Rx. And this is an episode where I have the pleasure of a guest in this studio today, and it is Kevin Strandberg. He has been a guest before. And we're excited to have him join us again. For those that might have missed the prior episode where Kevin and I had a delightful conversation about the goal cycle and all things goals, which we both love talking about. And it was such a rich episode. I'm going to link that in the show notes. And today we're going to move on to having some, some more conversation around a whole different topic, although in some ways we can connect them. And it's about employee-driven teams and engaging employees in important initiatives, such as even things like improving patient experience and meeting goals in that area. So welcome to today's episode, Kevin, and I'm going to turn it over to you to to introduce yourself a bit to our audience. Great. Thanks, Sue. I'm really happy to be back. I agree with you. This whole idea of being able to talk about things that you're passionate about is a great way to do a podcast. Uh, I love listening to your other guests and and all of the passions that they have about the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Healthcare is such an exciting work in general because it provides this opportunity to really live out our passions, which I think is great. As far as background, Mm -hmm. I have worked for a very, very long time in healthcare, specifically in strategy, patient experience, and marketing. What I'm really proud of is that I'm in the inaugural class of certified patient experience professionals. And I just feel really proud to be able to put that forward behind my name because I think it really shows the passion and work that I love to do in the patient experience. So I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, that is such a wonderful accomplishment, you know, that, you know, the whole body of knowledge and expertise around elevating the patient experience that, you know, we really started to put some real theory and science and tactics and research behind it, which is, you know, to the benefit of patients for sure. And for you to be part of some of that initial inaugural effort is, that's really, really quite an achievement, Kevin, really. It's been great. The thing that I that I especially like about that work and getting ready to be certified was this understanding of tying data to experience, tying a number to the storytelling associated with it, which I hadn't really processed very well before. I got into the patient experience because I, I really felt like it was important to have an advocate for patients and for family members. But what I realized is you can really tie it so directly to data-driven changes in your organization, which I hadn't really processed very well. And and that process of becoming certified really taught me a lot about connecting data to storytelling. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that connects to what we talked about last time on the podcast, which is, you know, data and goals and how data really helps us know what to prioritize and to know if what we've prioritized is actually moving in the right direction based on our plans and our efforts and our actions. So it does really come full circle and connect in so many ways, the goal cycle, as well as improving the patient experience. 
Well, in the importance of frontline teams to be able to to take a step back from their day-to-day work and say, so what are patients telling us about their experience? That's one of the things that I really, really like about the employee-driven teams, especially the focus on the patient experience, because those individuals can then say, oh, so this is how it relates to my work. And this is how I can bring it back to my coworkers to talk about not only the data that's on the wall, because so often the data, people start eyes rolling in the back of their head. But if you can tie a story to it, then all of a sudden it becomes, oh, I remember when this happened for me with a patient. And and I think that that's probably the strongest work that can be done in that patient experience realm using a frontline team. Because it really drives home the data rather than separates them from the data. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we know the importance of leadership. We've both been healthcare leaders, but every day we're not the ones taking care of patients. And Mm -hmm. so those that are closest to the patients, their work predominantly interfaces or in some ways supports that patient experience, they do see and feel the stories firsthand. Mm -hmm. And then also when we need to make changes in processes and systems and different ways that support that better, that experience better, like they have the ideas for it. They know the answers for it. And then they're the ones that actually have to do it. Right. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. do it with them, not to them, I guess is, is our, (laughs) our common phrase. Yeah, for sure. Well, and I would say the other piece that, that I find so interesting is how, leaders can reinforce staff about finding the passion in their work, which is so patient-centered. I love this idea of leaders being able to say at the end of the day, so what do you feel good about in the work that you did today? And most often it's not going to be paperwork or it's not going to be the three-hour meeting that I went to. You know, it's going to be a moment in time that Mm -hmm. either was directly with a patient a family member, a medical staff person, or a coworker. We talk about patient experience, but it still is so much about people experience. And and I love this idea of trying to dig in deeper than just saying, thank you for your work, thank you for your work, thank you for your work, but rather really digging into, so what do you feel good about when you walk out the door? Yes, and you're right. It's not the paperwork, right? It's the people (laughs) that they touch through their work in the day, for sure. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. For sure. Uh, One of the really cool things that a patient experience team did that I was involved in is this idea of not only connecting the patient experience, but also employee engagement. They launched what was called One Great Experience, One Great Team. And I love this whole concept of blending those two pieces together. Of course, ultimately, it's about one great experience for our patients, no question. But it is also about taking good care of each other. It's about one team approach. I find it so interesting that on patient satisfaction surveys, they ask the question so often about staff work together to care for you. And I think when you first think about it, you think, well, Patients can't really know whether we're working together. But that's just not true. They, they can tell. It's the feel of the the handoffs. It's the feel of the two people coming into the room and working together to get something done clinically. It's about positive experiences in the hallway when you see your coworkers that people inadvertently hear. But I love this idea of one great experience, one great team, because it's both things that matter and both that are so closely tied together in the work that we do. That is so, such an important emphasis to make is that it's really hard to work on improving the patient experience without in parallel working on elevating that employee experience because they're Mm -hmm. so connected in the ways that you mentioned in patients, they do know if we work well together to care for them. They can, they know if they're falling through the cracks or getting caught in the middle of our, <laughs> our problems. It's just obvious. It is obvious. It also, it's so interesting in doing leadership training when you ask leaders, so when your staff's schedule comes out for the next two weeks, I can tell you, first of all, they look at their line as far as when they're working And then they look at who they're working with. And almost to a person, 
those leaders will say, yeah, what my staff say is, oh, this shift is going to be really easy because look who I'm working with. Or this shift is going to be more difficult because look who I'm working with. And, and that's mm-hmm. bound to make a difference for our patients. And I know this has nothing to do with people being professional and doing great work every single shift, but it's about the extra added piece of working together that I think is so interesting in this idea of one great team. Mm-hmm. It's also interesting if we really do this whole thing of managing up of other people. And I think so often we forget managing up of providers who are a key to a patient believing that their healthcare system is doing what they should be doing. But managing up is such a good practical tool to be able to identify this one great team concept that that I think is really important. Yeah, you know, it really is. As each of us as clinicians develop that relationship and trust with a family member of the patient or the patient themselves, when we are in that position of rapport, we can hand that off, that confidence off, relay that trust to the next provider, the next clinician, or the next department, or the next organization that's going to serve them through that process of managing up. And boy, that changes the experience for them when they have that confidence and that sense of I'm in the right place and in the right hands with people, not just right in front of me, but the next one and the next one that will take good care of me. Yeah, just well, a beautiful I, thing I think you have to, to be play out really- on behalf of the patients. Well, and I think, Sue, you never want staff to give inaccurate or insincere information about their coworkers. But you can always find something positive about how they do their practice. Or I can tell you, Jane is a really good physical therapist. And I tell you, she's supposed to be here at 10 o'clock. And I tell you, she's going to be here at 10 o'clock because she's always on time. You know, even that is a managing up Mm -hmm. tool. Even if it isn't about particular Mm -hmm. skills, it makes people feel comfortable in who's going to be coming next. And it's the ideal piece for this idea of one great team. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Can we you know, talk- you're familiar with the capstone systems and approach to how we work with our partner organizations. And in our last conversation, we talked about the goal system or the goal cycle. And we've hinted a little bit today about developing leaders and, and the role of leaders. But then there's these employee-driven teams and their role in the organization and its improvement. Is there an example of one of those things that your patient experience team champion that you think is a great share for other organizations to learn from? Well, I'll tell you two of them. One of them's kind of funny. We were having this discussion about managing up. In fact, it was the highlight for a particular month in looking at particular skills that we want people to develop. And uh, one of the patient experience people said, well, I'm not quite sure why we always have to talk positively about our manager if I'm talking to a patient. And I said, well, tell me a little bit more about that. And she said, well, my understanding is managing up is all about saying good things about my manager, which I think is kind of a funny (laughs) thing because that isn't it at all. But because managing is in that phrase, there's a lot of confusion about what is managing up. And how does it Mm -hmm. play for me as a frontline staff person? So it's not about saying positive things about your manager or giving your manager gifts or anything like that. It's just about talking positively about your coworkers, about the organization, about your department, about the providers. But the term, I think, gets a bit confusing. So I, I love that story about... Yeah, Mm -hmm. I I have to talk positively about my manager. You know, I think, you know, our employees on these teams help keep us real, you know, and ground us in, wait a minute, we don't even know what you're really talking about. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, we throw terms around all the time that I think are not necessarily frontline understandable. And I think we have to be careful of that. And like you say, to your point, data, we throw data around. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's right. The other one is an interesting one that happened for me quite a long time ago now, but it really, really sticks in my head. Uh, I was moderating a panel of real patients in front of a group of leaders in the organization that that individual received care. And there were three or four people on the panel 
a quite talkative group except for one particular person. I can see her to this day. She came in definitely elderly. She brought her priest with because she was incredibly nervous about being involved in the experience at all, especially with this huge group of people. She had on her Sunday house dress. And you know how how that particular age of a person at that point in time wore a great big brooch, multicolored gems uh, right, right here. Well, she had on her Sunday best and she had on her brooch and she was holding the hand of her priest when she mm. came in. And she was relatively quiet during the whole discussion, the whole panel discussion, because I think she was feeling it out. And I also think she was nervous. As we got toward the end, I wanted to check in with each of the panelists. And, and I said to her, you know, you have an opportunity here to talk to people who really are involved in your care and also involved in your family's care. What do you want them to know? And she took the hand of her priest and she took a deep breath and she said, you know, I was married to my husband for 64 years. He came into your emergency room uh, by ambulance. And when I got there, we knew that things were incredibly difficult for him. But here's what I know for sure. You knew that he was dying. And I knew that he was dying. And you wouldn't let me be with him. Which you could just feel this collective sigh of what could we have done differently. And almost immediately, the CEO of the hospital stood up, walked a little bit toward her and said, I'm so sorry that we failed you in that situation. And really, Mm -hmm. he didn't say much more than that. But that is truly a patient experience leader who was not thinking about what's the Mm -hmm. political right thing to say here. But I have a person in front of me who's hurting, and we were part of that hurt. How can I make it just a little better? I, I think I'll always remember that that experience because it was so real on her part and so passionate on the part of the CEO who did the right thing. They had a long conversation after the panel, and I don't know what happened with that because that was a private conversation, but it really is this whole idea of tying that to the patient experience. It isn't just about the data. It's about that single experience for Mm -hmm. that woman at that point in time. We can make a real difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It is such important work, isn't it? And it's just in these exact moments and time that we either make it or break it for the patient. And it, Mm -hmm. it isn't just something that impacts that moment. It can impact years of remembering that moment because it was so important in their lives, either good or bad. I mean, or anything in between, you know, Mm -hmm. but definitely those highlight moments or those low moments where we delighted or failed, Mm -hmm. (laughs) possibly Mm -hmm. miserably in the eyes of our patients that, that are the ones that carry on maybe for, for years. And maybe we can learn from the most. Well, well, and, and recovered as much as they could in that particular situation. I can tell you there are providers as well as leaders in that organization that have that memory that they carry just like I do. You can't mm-hmm. help but be moved by that in knowing that she's not the only one. So how are we going to make the difference tomorrow, not just today. You know, we can't fix that experience for her. We can build a bridge to it and we can make sure it doesn't happen again. I mean, that that's the whole deal mm-hmm. for sure. Absolutely. This whole concept about one great experience, though, I think is an interesting one, Sue, because everything speaks. I think so often about looking at a patient satisfaction survey that is scoring at a seven, you know, talk about combining data with the actual experience. And when you read the notes at the bottom, everything was spectacular. The food was great. My room was really clean. I love my doctor. Of course, I'm going to come back to you. But I had a really crabby registration person and they gave him a seven. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Mm -hmm. How many encounters they had in this one great experience just one nick 
changes everything for people. I'm a little surprised mm-hmm. by that until yeah. I think about when I am, am doing a survey in healthcare or in anything else, if there is one person, they can either make or break the promise you know, of, of taking good care of people. So that's why I think it's so important when you talk about one great experience, one great team, that you involve everybody, not just clinical people, but non-clinical people too, because everyone uh, makes an impression. Even if it's uh, high in the hallway, yeah. another tactic that Capstone is really, really good at implementing is saying hi to people in the hallway costs you nothing, but it can really make or break an experience for the patients and the loved ones who are there because they need to be supportive of someone who's in the bed. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's, I mean, if you think about how complicated really in, in the you know, example of healthcare. I mean, there's other service industries, but in the example of healthcare, I mean, in that situation of death and dying, right? Um, That's a very complicated situation. And if you think about how many people, how many touches, how many, you know, from registration right on through, you know, and the work that they're doing and the interactions they're having and how every one of those needs to, to line up to the expectations and, it is very complicated to mm-hmm. have a top ranking, award winning, consistent patient experience. I mean, it's a very complex endeavor for healthcare organizations to pursue. I mean, there's nothing really, sometimes it just seems common sense, but it's very complicated, really. It is. I think that that's why you really need a strong patient experience team. And that team really needs to be. Frontline employees, different shifts, different departments, clinical and non clinical, because everybody sees it just a little differently. So, having a very engaged but also varied experience group of people on that patient experience really makes a difference. Things that you don't think about that someone else who works an evening shift or works an overnight shift that feels very, very different. I mean, you think about things like what food is available on nights and weekends, very different than Monday through Friday from from eight to five. I mean, even something like that, that is a huge comfort for people, especially for loved ones, that wouldn't necessarily be a, available nights or weekends. And, and I love it when a staff person who works one of those, quote, off shifts, talks very specifically about, here's what my work is like. So how can we accommodate that in in our work to have it available for everybody, not just for Monday through Friday, eight to five? Many insights Mm -hmm. from non-clinical people who have had healthcare experiences because they look at the world differently than clinical people do. And I I think that that's really valuable. It doesn't change the fact that clinical people are at the bedside, don't get me wrong, but it does provide insight to them about their work that they may not be able to have because they're so engrossed in the actual work of of caring for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes that, it almost gives it a a little bit of an outsider perspective or Mm -hmm. at least a questioning, like, why do you do it that way? Like, I, yeah. I don't understand why, why it has to be that way. Or yeah. is it, doesn't it seem like this might be a better way? And it comes from a whole different perspective. Every week it, through our work with Capstone, we're working with dozens of teams across healthcare organizations, employee-driven teams for the most part. And every week they're amazing me. So they are rock stars. <laughs> they are rock stars. Plus in the whole scheme of things, I find it so interesting to sit with a group of frontline employees and talk about what is the patient experience and when does it start? We did this exercise, you know, where we write up on the board, what's the first impression that patients have? And of course, so often they say, well, when they walk in the front door. And then we said, well, what impressions do they have before that? Well, parking and whether I can get there or not. Okay. What's the impression before that? Are there any before that? Well, finding the place, which is like, yeah, directions are not easy. GPSs are not always perfect. What entrance do I come in? Are they marked well? All of that. I think that's interesting. And then, you know, the question of, well, let's back it up. Are there any before that? And you get to this idea of first phone call 
and and does that make or break the experience? And then really interesting, staff started talking about community impressions even be, before you decide to call. And that might be formal things like marketing billboards or social media ads or whatever, but they also talked about old-fashioned word of mouth at the grocery store. You know, where do you go to get your care and why do you choose that or not choose that? That is such good work for a patient experience team to be able to identify how we can either make or break the experience way early on before they show up at our door. And of course, then, Mm -hmm. then you do it the other way. Okay. So they got to your door. What's the first impression at the front door? What's the next impression that happens? I had an interesting consulting experience. I was giving feedback as a mystery shopper. And when I gave the report, I said, so I got to tell you, here's my first impression. All of your huge urns of plants that you have at the front door, all of your plants are dead. And I said, here's my thought. Not good with living things, right? And they said, well, (laughs) (laughs) well, we don't come in the front door. We come in the staff door. So how do we know what the plants are at the front door? Yet, uh, honestly, Sue, you know it. Everything speaks. So... I think mm-hmm. I think it's it's very important to really identify the key moments by that patient experience team because they have insights that nobody else has. And really thinking about how you move those pieces along from the billboards to the discussion at the grocery store, all the way through lasting impressions after you've done great clinical care is something that that I find incredibly interesting. And it really is Mm -hmm. one experience. It's not a parking lot experience, a registration experience, a hallway experience, a food service experience, a PT experience. People don't look at healthcare that way. It is one great experience that, that they will remember for a long time. It's the most important and sometimes the most scary things that happen to people in healthcare. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I love this idea mm-hmm. of having the patient experience team actually sit down and talk about what are the touch points and why are those touch points important in the work that we do? Yeah. And there's hundreds of them, of course, but um, it's figuring out what's most yeah. important to them. Yeah, boy. And you know, the just like your secret shopper example, you know, your patient experience teams can serve that way. I know like, for instance, telephone etiquette, is a common first and lasting impression with people when they're calling to schedule or get directions or make an appointment and those kind of things. But that's one of the things that I know that many of our patient experience team members do is they actually validate the phone experience. They actually each make 10 calls to different departments like rehab and, and whatever and check for that interaction in the protocol and then are able to educate and or update their protocols based on what they're validating. So it's fun that our employees can serve not just what the idea generators and educators to their peers on how best to improve the patient experience, but they can also validate it and check in to see how we're doing and how we might improve it even more. You know, I'll give you a quick tip on telephone etiquette that came through a patient experience team that I just love. You know, we always say, I will transfer you to Sue. And of course, we should always Mm -hmm. say she'll take good care of you or something like that. But I love the turn of phrase by saying, I'm going to connect you with Sue rather than transfer you to Sue. Mm -hmm. Connecting is a positive verb with very positive feelings and emotions. Transfer doesn't feel that way. And that really came out of a patient experience team idea, just that quick idea of changing it to I'll connect you rather than I'll transfer you. You know, those are the things Mm. that that I feel like patient experience people can learn from others and implement Mm -hmm. quick and easy ways. It doesn't take any longer, 
in order to make mm-hmm. people feel different and better about it. I love that. I'll connect mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Words matter. I mean, like yeah. communication and words matter a lot. And what a great pickup by, again, you know, employee driven team. They, mm-hmm. they are so smart. <laughs> they are so smart. They are, they so, are smart. so smart. And, and, and I love yeah. in those team meetings that the challenge is that team members bring to say, this doesn't feel quite right for me. How, how can we make this feel different? Or my family had this experience last week, and this is what wasn't quite as good as I wanted it to be. You know, we need that honest feedback from them. And they have a heightened awareness. I mean, th- they're looking for things that are going well or who are not going well. So their feedback yeah. is really, really important. I mean, it, it's like having your own uh, mystery shoppers on staff because they're giving you loads of information, mm-hmm. uh, which I think is really, really good. I mean, yes, mystery shopping has a huge role to play in healthcare, but you can also have internal mystery shoppers because of their actual life experiences in your facility. Mm-hmm. What I also yeah, love yeah. about and this- if they are on the patient experience team, their radar is on and their antennas are up looking at their work and looking at the work around them differently, truly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true. You know, one other piece of this idea of one great experience, one great team that we haven't quite talked about yet is I love this overall connection of the employee engagement teamwork and the patient experience teamwork, the the synergy that happens between teams, not just within a team. And that's what really happens with Mm. this idea of one great experience, one great team. I mean, if we tie it to our pillars, it's about the service pillar and it's also about the people pillar. It's about improving the goal cycle in those two pillars and probably ultimately in the quality pillar as well. But in the name itself, it really is the bringing together of two approaches, staff approach and patient approach that I think is so very valuable. We need to find ways to do things smarter with less energy and all the synergy that we can get. And I think that that really connecting those two teams is a great way for seeing the organization move forward by leaps and bounds. It really gives a great opportunity for synergy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's truly something that we don't even know how to improve the the patient experience or help an organization without that lever of improving the employee experience and combining those two efforts together. I, I, it's just so hard to separate out that people part and that patient part when they're just like, they have to work together. They have to combine together those efforts to be able to, to pull off a great experience. I mean, if it is not a great place to work, it doesn't matter if you have the best technology and the best systems and the best protocols for taking care of patients. If that workplace culture part is not there, we call it like the the ugly broth, right? The the untasty broth. Like you put all that beautiful ingredients of, you know, or or you know, grass-fed beef and, you know, farm to table vegetables and you put all of that in this ugly broth of culture and and employee experience and and the soup's not going to taste good. Yeah, that's true. So often in healthcare, we are in silos for our work. And I think it's really important to cross-pollinate not only our real work, but also cross-pollinate the teamwork that's being done because you can't do it in isolation. The employee engagement team cannot do it all by themselves. The patient experience team cannot do that all by themselves. You have to be able to work together to see improvement in all areas, not just in patient experience, not just in employee engagement. Like you say, it's the coming together of both sides that I think are incredibly important to ultimately improve both. Because if you have Mm -hmm. staff that are And to see that they're all on the same page, right? They're all united towards the same thing. Yeah, Yeah. they're, they're really doing this. We're all connected by the same mission, the same vision. We're just doing our own part and Mm -hmm. collaboratively figuring out how we have to work together, where it crosses over. Yeah, Yeah, that's true. And of course, I would say one of the basis of those things comes down to the real importance of storytelling, because that changes the idea of the patient experience. It moves from the head to the heart. 
And it's why people got into healthcare in the first place. I mean, we could be selling TVs or slinging pizzas or driving a, a Uber or whatever, which would feel very, very different than at the end of the day, we're able to say, look at how we helped people today. And I specifically say people because I think that that mm-hmm. is staff and medical staff and family members and, of course, ultimately the patient. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is exciting and purposeful work for sure. Mm-hmm. There's lots of purposeful work, but for sure, uh, in healthcare. Yeah. I think it's a yeah. bit unique in the sense that people come to us at their most scared and vulnerable times. Most often, they are difficult situations, and generally speaking, they're unplanned. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I think it's a great honor to be able to work in healthcare, to be able to be involved with people, and make mm-hmm. those real connections, and ultimately feeling like. At the end of the day, having done something good for the world, even if it's just one person at a time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm still excited to be part of the the effort every single day, too. Like it gets me out of bed fired up to how can we do it better? And I can't imagine doing it passionless and not being excited for it because it is hard work, as exciting and purposeful as it is. It's, you know, it takes a lot of energy and commitment to, to do this work. And, so, so, and I'm Sue, still in it, still loving it every day. But Sue, I think what you're saying is then you'll never be able to retire because you will always have the passion. <laughs> There's people that would agree that I probably never will. <laughs> <laughs> my family, my husband included. So, but uh... <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's a pretty mm. exciting thing because every experience is different too, which I think is so interesting. Not just Mm -hmm. the work with the patient experience team, but the experiences with patients because every single story is different. Everyone's got one, Mm -hmm. but there there Mm -hmm. always are those nuances of what happens for individuals, for families, for uh, support givers, for caregivers, which, which I love. I love digging in and finding out the story. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And the work is never done, no matter how great you get at this. We can never declare victory too soon. We can never say we're done getting better at it. There's always opportunities, which is really important to commit to no matter how good we get. There's always opportunity to mm-hmm. elevate it in some way. And these teams are a really important part of it. And I'm so excited that we had this time together to talk about the efforts of some teams and some of the creative things they're doing to improve the patient experience. I thank you again, Kevin, for having this opportunity to chat about something as important as this. And- so I think the theme today, Sue, is passion. It's about finding your passion and then being able to put it into practice every day. Our work life is too important to not do it with passion. And I think we all know that our coworkers and our patients feel whether we're in it or not. So, you know, finding your passion is such an important thing. It it makes life incredibly exciting, doesn't it? It does. It does. And connecting to it, even on those days where, you know, we're all going to have bad days, right? Or Mm -hmm. days where energy or excitement isn't as high. And we have to remember that on the other side of that is some pretty important people that need us. For sure. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yes, it was a wonderful and I look forward to the next conversation. Thanks, Kevin. Bye now. Bye now. Thanks for tuning in to Culture Change Rx. If you found value in today's episode and you are a believer in fostering change in healthcare, join us in making a difference. Follow, rate, and review our podcast on your favorite platform. Share it with colleagues and your network. Together, we can make a lasting impact. Until next week, keep inspiring positive change.